Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're doing exactly the same thing as in the previous video, except instead of having a voltage source, we have a current source. Again, we're trying to find the impedance of the load, which will give us the maximum power transfer, and then we're trying to figure out what that maximum power transfer is. And remember, it's the maximum average power transfer which means we're going to have to find the equivalent impedance, the Thevenin impedance of the circuit, and the Thevenin voltage of the circuit in order to determine what the load impedance should be and to determine the maximum average power transferred. So first, let's find the Thevenin impedance. So notice we, uh, what we do here, yes, we simply remove the current source and we leave an open circuit there. And now we try to find the impedance across the two endpoints of the circuit. Notice that from here we have, hmm, looks like a parallel circuit with this on one side and this on the other side, which means that the Thevenin impedance is equal to the product over the sum. So the product would be 5 times 8. We add these two together, we get plus 10 and minus 4, that would be plus J6, divided by the sum of the two, that would be 5 plus 8 plus J6. So it's the product over the sum of the two impedances of the two branches. So this becomes equal to 40 plus J30 divided by 13 plus J6. If we then convert that to the amplitude and, um, let's see, amplitude and angle format, 40, 30, that means we have a magnitude of 50 with a phase angle of uh, let's see here, three quarters. Oh, by now I should have that memorized, but I keep looking it up. So three divided by four, that's 0.75. Take the inverse tangent. It'd be a positive 36.87 degrees. 36.87 degrees in the positive direction. Divided by, we have 13 squared plus 36. That gives us 205. Take the square root. That gives us 14.32. 14. 3, 2 with a phase angle of 6 divided by 13, take the inverse tangent of that, which is 24.78 degrees, 24.78 degrees. That means that the Thevenin impedance is equal to 50 divided by 14.32, which is 3.49. With a phase angle of 36.87 minus 24.78, that gives us 12.09 degrees. And now we're going to write that in real imaginary parts. So we take the cosine of that angle and multiply that times 3.49, that gives us 3.41. In the J direction, we get 12.09, take the sine of that, times 3.49, that gives us 0 0.73. So this, if we take that and multiply it times ohms, that gives us the Thevenin impedance, which means if we then want to find the load impedance to get the maximum power transferred, we know that the load impedance, Z load, is equal to the complex conjugate of the Thevenin impedance, which therefore will be equal to that with a negative sign, or 3.41 minus J times 0 0.73, and we put an ohm symbol, symbol there, there we go, and that will be the load resistance, which will then allow the maximum average power transfer to the load impedance. That doesn't look very good. Let me try it again. There we go, a little bit better. Now, we need to find the Thevenin voltage. So with a current this way, we want to find the current through this branch. So let's call this I1, the current going this direction. And let's call this I2 with the current going in that direction. And we're all, of course, interested in I1. So how do we find I1? I1 is equal to the current provider, which is 12 amps, multiplied times the ratio of the impedance on the other branch. So that would be um, 8 minus J4 divided by the total impedance of both branches. So we add these two together, 8 plus 5, which is 13, and J10 minus J4, that would be plus J6. So this gives us current in this branch, which means we'll get a current 
to this 5 ohm resistor and then we get a voltage divider to find the voltage Tevin and the Tevin voltage across the two terminals. So first we need to convert this. So this is equal to 12 times. Uh, that would be 64 plus 16, that's 80. Take the square root of 80, which is 8.94. 8.94 with a phase angle of, that's minus 1 half, 0.5. So take the inverse tangent, that's a minus 26.565. Minus 26.565 degrees divided by 13 squared. I think I've seen that before somewhere. Yes, right here. 13 plus J6. Okay, that gives us 14.32 with a phase angle of a positive 24.78 degrees. All right, so that will give us the current. So I1 will be equal to, let's multiply all that together, 12 times 8.94 divided by 14.32, that's a current of 7.49 amps, with a phase angle of, that's a negative 26.565, and subtract from that 24.78 equals, that's a negative 51 point three four five degrees all right so that's the current now what we need to do is we need to find the thevenin voltage so to find the voltage here we need to multiply the current times the resistance so thevenin voltage is equal to i1 times the resistance 5 ohm resistance so this is equal to 7.49 with a phase angle of minus 51.345 degrees and multiply that times a 5 with a phase angle of 0 degrees of course because there's no phase angle across the resistance so we get 7.49 times 5 equals that gives us a Thevenin voltage equal to 37.45 degrees with a phase angle, oh not degrees but volts volts with a phase angle of minus 51.345 degrees. All right, so now we have the Thevenin voltage and we have the Thevenin resistance or impedance. Now we need to find the maximum power transfer. So the maximum power transfer, the maximum average power transfer is equal to Thevenin voltage squared divided by Let's see here, that would be 8 times the load resistance. So we need to take this quantity and square it. So that gives us 37.45 squared. We need to find the magnitude of that squared divided by 8 times the magnitude of the load resistance, which is 3.41. All right, what is that equal to? We square that. We divide by 8 and divide by 3.41. That gives us 51.4 watts. And that would be the maximum average power transfer provided we set up a load impedance that's equal to the conjugate, the complex conjugate of the uh, Thevenin equivalent impedance. If we do that, we get this amount of power transferred. And that is how it's done.